Good morning everyone this is Madhusudan Raj today i want to discuss what will likely happen with the future of the indian nation state so we all know that since coming to power in 2014 narendra modi and his ideological backers rss are trying very hard to centralize all the powers into their own hands so that they can ultimately convert the secular constitution of india into a hindu theo theocratic constitution their long you know a sort goal is to turn india into a hindu majoritarian theocratic nation state and all their efforts are in that direction so what he is trying to do is is trying to dismantle all the institution secular institutions that the uh, former governments you know uh, or the founding fathers of india they put in place uh, and they got that in gift from the britishers who ruled this country for a long period of time and basically they are the ones who started all these institutions uh, institutions like the central bank or institution like the judiciary the supreme court then the courts and the institution of the parliamentary democracy i'm talking about so narendra modi and rss are trying very systematically to destroy all this institution and they already have destroyed almost all of the institution because they know that once they have the power into their hand then only they can subvert the secular constitution of india and turn india into a hindu theocratic country what is the goal of hindu nation or an akhand bharat so what i want to tell tell you today is that how they're destroying these institutions and how that is going to affect the future of the indian nation state now nation state is defined as a geographic monopoly a territorial monopoly in which are uh, the state officials have the monopoly over the use of force so they want to grab all this force into their hands so that they can you know suppress all the opposition and then they can turn india into a hindu rashtra and we already are seeing that they are doing it one after another they you know resigned the article 370 and uh, ended the autonomy of the jammu and kashmir state uh, just uh, yesterday they also you know inaugurated a half complete ayodhya ram temple which was a long sought goal and on the basis of that narendra modi is asking for his reelection in the coming uh, 2024 lok sabha elections so what he is doing is and then he will go after as i told you in my last you know video analysis that if he wins election he is going to go after all the non bjp states and by using this centralized power of these forces and by subverting all the institution and using those institution to defeat those states and you know basically change the governments by hook or by crook in those states and then once all the states are into his pocket then he can easily declare india as a hindu rashtra or hindu nation you know hindu fundamentalist nation state so what i want to tell you is that how he is destroying ha or how he already has destroyed this institution and how one institution which is still going to stand in his way and how you know on what side that institution will go will decide the future of this country so for example he destroyed rbi he has destroyed the judiciary rbi is being used to fund his uh, hindu ideological and so called welfare projects you know these two things is using to fool the country uh his you know he has destroyed the judiciary system as we all can see the supreme court chief justice you know uh, chandra chud recently when he visited the somnath temple in gujarat he said this uh, saffron flag that is flying over the temple represents the unity of this country instead of the tricolor the national flag of india <clears throat> and we can see one after another verdicts the ayodhya verdict for example also exhibits that how the judiciary is already subverted in and is in the pockets of narendra modi he removed all the rbi governors who opposed him people like raghuram rajan urjit patel or viral acharya and put his lackey uh saktikant das who is not even an economist a history major bureaucrat as a governor of rbi and he's funding all his you know efforts of turning india into a hindu nation not only that he has just saffronized all the educational institutions also as you know we can clearly see everywhere you know they have this one common curriculum and into that they are trying very hard to you know change the cultural history of india and they want to remove the moguls and they want to remove the indian national congress from the historical books and put their own people and show as if rss is everything in india 
and the song and the VHP and the Bajrang Dals are everything in India. Uh, uh, recently in my university where I used to work, they were celebrating Ramotsav, a completely unconstitutional thing, for almost a week from 16 to 22nd uh, January and they were live screening their you know, Ram Temple inauguration and all that. So they have already subverted all the institution as the former Kashmir uh, governor also said, uh, Satya, Satyapal Malik, he also said that this Modi government is basically putting third class people as governors of different states and by using the governors, he's you know, kind of pressurizing the local governments and trying to subvert the power in that as we already saw in what happened in Tamil Nadu when the Tamil Nadu government uh, complain against the Stalin government of Tamil Nadu that they are not allowing screening of the inauguration of the Ram Temple. So by hook or by crook, they are trying to subvert the governments where they are not winning the elections like what we saw in Madhya Pradesh last time or we saw they tried in Rajasthan also. They did that in Karnataka also. They did that in Maharashtra recently. So they are trying very hard to grab power in the non-BJP states. And uh, after judiciary and they are using these economic institutions economic institutions like the enforcement directorates and the cbi to harass the political opponents and make sure they they join bjp because of the threat the moment they join bjp all their crimes are basically forgiven now the institution that is still standing uh, strong against the modi government uh, is the indian army and Indian army basically will determine the future of the of, of India because remember uh, the governments the state can only rule over the population by using two things one brute physical force and the second one is psychological propaganda which they spread through schools and from by using their what we call the second hand uh, uh, spreaders of ideas and these you know useful idiots like the Bollywood celebrities and all these people. So, but that propaganda can only go on uh, for, you know, a little bit long only. It cannot, you know, last for long. So ultimately, the physical power, the force, the, the you know, guns and the bombs and the tanks and everything is in the hands of Indian Army. So, so, so what happened is recently the Lieutenant General uh, of, uh, I think, uh, naval commander or something, General Katiyar, he came out and he said that the uh, the army's allegiance, the loyalty of army is to the secular nature of India. And he uh, openly warned that any tinkering with the secular or political nature of the Indian army will create a lot of future tensions. So what is likely to happen now is after subverting all other institution, Indian army will determine whether Narendra Modi and RSS are in a position to destroy the secular nature and secular constitution of India and turn it into Hindu theocracy. If Indian army goes with them, you know, as General Katiyar said, they are still secular, their, their allegiance is, is to the original secular constitution of India. But suppose if the army goes with Narendra Modi, then it will be very easy for him to turn India into a Hindu Rashtra. But that is very unlikely because the general already said that any kind of tinkering with that secular nature and the apolitical nature of the army will create a lot of problems. Because what will happen the moment you politicize the army, the military, who holds the trump card, who basically can become king makers, like we see in the neighboring states of, state of Pakistan, because remember, Pakistan also started as a secular nation and then they turned Pakistan into an Islamic Republic. And what happened is the military was also politicized. And after that, we saw coup after coups, military coups, the military power, the generals will overthrow the civilian governments and they became the king makers. They basically started to decide who is going to become the prime minister and who is going to become the president, etc. We know General Musaffar, uh, uh, he basically, Musharraf, General Musharraf reigned for like almost 10 years as the president of, you know, uh, Pakistan. He was not elected by anyone. He was a military general. So what will happen is the moment Narendra Modi government tries to politicize the military because they will have to, if they really want to convert India into a Hindu Rashtra, 
without military's help that work is not possible so they will have to try to politicize the military now what can happen the moment you politicize the military many generals are also very ambitious and then all kind of you know as i said the pandora's box will open and then the civilian government in india can you know face all kind of problems like what kind of problems they can face first i told you like pakistan india can you know face a military coup where some politically ambitious general because when the army is politicized generals will also think that why why can't i become a prime minister because i have the guns and i have the military you know behind me because the army army is you know kind of soldiers are it's a very hierarchical system and generals hold all the power so some general who is very influential in the army and if he becomes politically more ambitious he can you know carry out a coup and overthrow the civilian government like narendra modi he doesn't know what you know he's playing with fire basically over here because because ultimately he cannot brainwash the military military knows that they have the guns not narendra modi or his rss you know guys they are they, they cannot fight the indian military using the sticks and all that if one battalion of a military today decide to march on to delhi with the tanks and everything the civilian government will be in a complete disarray and i believe that it happened and there was a lot of panic but they, they did not allow you know people to uh talk about it so a military general can become politically ambitious and he might try to overthrow the civilian government and then indian nation state is gone and and that general can declare himself as a lifelong prime minister and president and everything and then india plunges and do a military rule a military junta rule like what we have in myanmar burma which is also a neighboring state the second thing that can happen that what what is very likely to happen is the military will itself disintegrate into different faction because remember the indian military is made of not just homogeneous one group but the soldiers come from all different states with and all kind of different cultural background different languages different religions i'm sure there are many muslim you know soldiers also and there are many sikh soldiers also you know i saw the data and most of the soldiers are coming from uttarakhand yeah punjab uttarakhand jammu and kashmir or haryana or rajasthan and what can happen is and there are a lot of southern state soldiers also into the you know indian military so the southern state nations you know who have very different cultural differences with the northern states they can decide to on go on their own and try to have their own governments into the southern states and then the military infighting can start the civil war kind of situation can start where local military contingents are you know kind of uh uh separating themselves from the indo indian military and they grab all the guns and they declare independence and they can say that okay now we are going to rule tamil nadu or we are going to rule kerala we are going to rule gujarat and then it will become like whoever can grab whatever territory they will get it because when it comes to war the military has all the you know equipments and all the firepower politicians don't have any firepower generals soldiers can capture the politicians and shoot them dead i mean it's that easy for them it's not that difficult all this talk and all this you know propaganda media propaganda is nothing when it comes to use of firepower uh so what can happen is the indian military can disintegrate and different faction can start fighting for political you know superiority into different kind of locations in india itself and then the indian nation state basically will disintegrate like what has happened and remember we all have to understand that the history on the indian nation state is this so many you know independent you know principalities independent princely states were fighting with each other for supremacy like when the britishers uh, went home they ended their colonial rule in india there were something like 700 different princely states small 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 princely states in india so the army is very likely to go in that direction and they will fracture and they will have their own factions and all these factions are going to fight in between and that is how very likely the indian nation state will end because remember the indian nation state was formed by sardar patel using the armed forces the violence it is very likely that the indian nation state will end will disintegrate at the hands of the same army the military 
and and politicians will not be able to do anything because generals will capture them and maybe they will take them in front of everyone and shoot them dead what are you going to do i mean all your talk is useless so i believe the indian nation state is going in this possible direction right now which is very dangerous for people any kind of military junta rule any kind of military dictatorship or any kind of civil war kind of situation is of course not good for people there will be chaos and there will be lot of violence and then it's free for all whoever can grab whatever they will take it and they will run with it and not only that third thing that can happen is the foreign powers can also take a lot of advantage of all these things like neighboring pakistan or china nepal bhutan sri lanka if indian nation state internally collapses because of all this stupid idiotic you know policies of narendra modi and rss this politics of hatred the neighbors are going to benefit they don't have to do anything all the neighboring bordering areas this neighboring state will capture whatever they can china will grab the, it is already grabbing the areas in the you know ladakh area and in the arunachal pradesh in the northeast you know border and all these things they will grab more land right because there will be no indian military left because the military itself is politicized and generals are busy grabbing power inside instead of looking outside so anyway i wanted to discuss all these things with you so thank you very much for watching me and i'll come in front of you again next time uh you take care let's see what happens thank you